Hey everybody, it's me, Bob from Whams Tech, and today we're gonna to continue on with our gamification in Glide how-to tutorial. So in our first two videos, we were able to set up our user profiles, we were able to add guilds, add users to those guilds, create ranking system, and be able to calculate who has earned which rank, and be able to display all of this nice and prettily on our user profile page. Now, in this part, part three, we're gonna talk about how to create challenges for your users, have your users be able to, uh, to complete those challenges, have an admin approve those challenges, and automatically award uh, XP for your users. So let's get started. All right, the first thing we have to do is go to our sheet, and create a new tab at the bottom, and we'll call this Challenges. Maybe you call it Quests, it's up to you. And then we also need a sheet for the, um, for the responses or for the record, for the log of users who have attempted to complete these challenges. So I can call it like Challenge Log, call it what you want. All right, in the challenges tab, we're gonna come up with information about the specific challenge. So maybe we need to have a date for the challenge, maybe a, a title, a description. Um, you need to have, maybe you're adding in an image or a video. Maybe there's a link. Right. I'm trying to think of the possibilities of the different scenarios of what quests or challenges you're going to have your users complete. Um, maybe there are some uh, instructions. This could be the same thing as the description. Right. Uh, fine. Let's start with that. And then in the challenge log, what do we need from our users? Well, we need their email address. We need to know what challenge it is. We need to know, oh, also in the challenges here, we need to know how much it's worth. So we could say uh, XP value. Now I'm gonna go ahead and also put maybe uh, your in-app currency, because maybe you wanna award some challenges are just XP and some challenges are just gold. Maybe we have both and both, right? So we could do uh, gold value as well, whatever your in-app currency is. All right, so email, challenge, um, whether or not they're awarded XP or gold. Then we need to know if it was approved. We need to have whatever their evidence is, right? Maybe you want to have them submit a comment or um, a note or feedback as well. Okay, I'm going to throw approved way over here. All right, and then uh, maybe the timestamp as to when they completed it, that'd be good. All right, all these things are, that should be good. So we just set up our sheet. All right, now that our sheet has these column headers, let's go ahead and actually create a challenge here. So for the title of our first challenge, let's see, today's the date, uh, what is the day? 725, 2020, oh, it's been a rough year. All right, so title, let's call this uh, Hello World. Our description will be um, testing out our first challenge. We'll come up with an image here in just a moment. Uh, maybe our video is a YouTube link. Ooh, I should put the YouTube link of our, of our series so far. What do you think about that? That'd be fun. All right, let's grab that. So videos, I'm gonna grab that first part one. Copy the image address. No, not the image address. Oh, come on, Bob. Copy the link address. All right, so there, maybe this link is to, you know, some other resource. Then maybe the instructions as to how they're to complete this challenge, right? So watch the video and Submit your feedback. Okay. We're gonna give them, let's say, we don't we don't have gold to set up in our in our uh, 
user base field here. Maybe we'll do that today too. Why not, right? So let's, yeah, let's do that too. So let's make this worth uh, 25 XP and five gold. Okay, perfect. So our image, let's come up with an image for our YouTube here. Well, actually, <laughs> let's see, over here we have, didn't it say copy image address? It did, so here's copy image address. Let's use the image for the YouTube video. That should work. All right, so let's go ahead now and create a tab for our challenges. I'm sorry to hear my dog eating in the background. She didn't eat her dinner before, and now she decides to eat it right when I want to make my video. Thanks, Isabel. All right. All right, let's go ahead and create a tab. Can you keep eating? It's fine. We'll learn she'll eat. It's fine. All right, we're going to go to new tab. And this, we gotta give a refresh first. I didn't recognize our changes yet. So we're reloading our sheet. All right, so this is our new tab. This is gonna be our challenges sheet. We'll call it challenges. And maybe this will be some sort of like victory, right? Some sort of challenge. Uh, let's see what we have. I don't think challenge would actually give us anything. It doesn't. What about award? Will give us anything again? You've been lucky with awards so far. Hmm, like this maybe. When you think challenges, what do you think of like someone climbing a mountain, right? It's a mountain, one of them. There is, oh, it'd be perfect if I actually had pro. <laughs> I don't have pro, so let's do flag. All right, let's do a flag. How about something like, like this? Challenges, the flag waving. Or something with a star. That's kind of neat. The skull. <laughs> Star is fine. All right, so you see challenges, and you see that we actually have our first challenge already waiting for us over here. And we can make this look however we want, right? What I'm thinking is we probably want to have a layout where we can filter this by challenges that we've completed and challenges we have not yet completed. So if we want to have a dynamic um, layout, that means we have to use a details layout and then build it ourselves rather than choosing one of the preset ones. So I'm going to go over here to the details layout and I'm going to trash all this details. And we're going to add now an inline list of our challenges. So again, we get the same effect, except now we're not tied into one layout. We can add any component we want on this screen. So our challenges, our image will be our image. Oh, look at that, it came in, that's nice. And our titles are title, details, we can add in our description, just like this. And I spelled challenge wrong. Why didn't anybody tell me? Oh, come on, nobody told me. Challenge. Okay, and then um, for users, we don't want users up here, but we want to have like new challenges or uncompleted challenges or something like this, right? And maybe we want this to be a little bit more engaging than just one line. So maybe we can use a tile layout, something like this, it's kind of nice. And we might also want to say how much each of these things are worth. So maybe put that information in as well. Ooh, let's do that too. All right, so I'm thinking right now we're starting to add a lot more elements than just these two things. So we might need to do a cards layout and a tiles layout, but let's actually go ahead and add in some of that data that we're thinking about adding as part of our shell here. So under the challenges, we want to see how much these things are worth. So this, these two number columns, this is our XP value and this is our gold value that will be awarded if they complete the challenge. And so we're gonna go ahead and edit our number column here to include the unit XP and our gold. You know what's kind of fun is creating your own currency. You can use your own unit, you can use emoji, right? You can use, um, you can use uh, symbols to create your own currency. Uh, so I do gold here, or is that, isn't there a bag of money? There's a money bag, I guess, money bag. Or coins, is, there, is coins one of them? There isn't, I thought there was, I guess I'm wrong. 
So I could do, you know, something like this, five gold. Right? And then if we want to show both of these together as one unit for display purposes, we can create a template column. So we can call this, you know, value display. And so we can do a template column where we're going to choose our XP and our gold. And we'll replace our gold with the gold value and our XP with the XP value. All right, so that looks good. And then we're going to come over here to our layout. And now we have, we can add that now too. So maybe we want to add in the tag as our values. So you can earn 25 XP and five gold, right? Um, maybe we want to add this information on top of our tiles. We need to do a layout like so with our overlay from the bottom left, top left. Kind of covers up the image. I could do a three by two and it stretches out like three by one better. Something like this. Uh, what does a card layout look like? A little cleaner, don't you think? Yeah, I think that's good. Okay. Uh, we can include the date if we want to. Ooh, that didn't look good. Let's not put that in there. Fine. All right, and then we go to, uh, now we need to configure the details view of this challenge. So what are our users gonna see when they click on this? Well, right now this looks ugly. <laughs> so we're gonna get rid of this title altogether. Let's go ahead and add an image. Uh, this image will be the image, but we're gonna make it a original image. We can see the full image here, edge to edge. Awesome, we'll throw that on top. Okay. Um, here's the date. Can we add that date as part of our caption of our image? Fine. All right, and then we want a title in our description. So we can add a title field if we want to, or we can use our text buttons. So play around with it, see what you like. Um, so there's no image here, but let's do our title and our description. And we can throw this one above the image, below the image, probably below the image, I like that. Okay, and then our video is an actual video, not a link. Okay, our instructions for our feedback, oh, the XP and the gold value. So I think we can add that on top of the image here as well as part of the tag, like this, so it matches this. Now, Another thing too you're thinking of here is that my profile, right? So here we have square corners. And here we have rounded corners. And you dive in here and you have square corners. So um, just a little bit of a design thing. Just kind of keep your your elements matching. So I'll go ahead and just make this a square to kind of keep everything matching. All right, so here's the instructions. So we need to submit, watch the video and submit feedback. Um, so in order to do that, we need to actually have the video in here. So we do have a video component like that. Now this does look kind of redundant, right? Mm. So maybe you want to create a different image here for this per for our tutorial. I'm not going to go ahead and do that, but maybe you want a different image here that relates to the type of image or request that this is or something of that nature, because this looks kind of, looks overwhelming, doesn't it? So you know, get rid of the image altogether and just do this. We can do that. Also, you see here that our screen title and our actual title are the same. Again, a design thing. So, and there's no way to get rid of this title here. So you can fill it in with one of these fields, like maybe the date, right? 
or if you want to fill it in with emptiness, right? You can't just do a space, unfortunately, but you can use this trick. It's called emptycharacter.com. What you can do is you can copy an empty space to your clipboard, come over here and paste in that empty space. Right? So if you like, you have like a cleaner look, that's one way to go. Um, otherwise you can throw in some sort of value here. All right, now I also noticed that we don't have our instructions on here about how much they'll be earning. So we wanna maybe add that part in here as well. Uh, maybe that could be the part that's up here or it can be something that's in here as well. Let's see, maybe we do just an action text. I usually don't use action test text all that much, but um, it's nice in a pinch. So there's a reward. It's not a link. Let's get rid of that. It does nothing, none. All right, so there's our reward, there's our instructions, here's the video, and now we need them to submit their feedback. Well, to submit their feedback, we need to have them submit a form. So we're gonna do a form button. So we're gonna add a component, form button, and here's our open form, and we can do a uh, button that says like a complete challenge. So we're gonna complete challenge, and here we're gonna submit all the information that we need as part of our challenge log. So we need the email, we need the challenge name, the XP and so forth, right? So um, to do that, only thing that we need them to fill out, oh, sorry, this is the challenge log. All right, so the only thing that they need to fill out is this evidence and the comment. So for the comment, we can just be a text entry like this, and it's gotta be required. And we could say um, some sort of prompting question, like submit your, or like, what, did, like, what did you learn? I can't spell today. What did you learn? Right? Um, and then for the evidence, this could be something that they're uploading maybe. Um, it could be an image picker or a file picker. Depends on what you're having them upload. Maybe you're having them take a snapshot of something, right? And this would be not required necessarily here because our instructions didn't tell them to upload anything here. All right, this could be the evidence as an image. Okay. And can we do a rating component too, or a reaction component? Ooh, we can do a reaction component, that'd be fun. Let's add that in. Let's add that in. Let's do uh, um, feedback to our challenge log. I haven't used the reaction component yet in any of my apps. So let's do the reaction component this will be the feedback. Oh, it's not in there. I gave it a refresh. Can you not add a feedback? Oh, there it is, good, okay. So feedback, so what, like awesome, uh, boring, difficult, Right, fun, whatever. And you can include some awesome emoji that are really small. Holy smokes, how does anybody read that? Let me zoom in here, all right. That's fun. All right, so they can, can we make that required? I don't think I can make it required though. All right, so title feedback. Yeah, you can't make that required, interesting. Oh well. So, you know, what did I learn? I learned, oh, before, before I actually fill this out, we need our other columns here. Now these other columns are ones that they're not filling out. These are ones that we passed to the sheet automatically. So for the first thing here, our um, current date and time will be our timestamp. The user's email address that's signed in right now, user's email under special values, <clears throat> that will be the email. Uh, the name of the challenge, our title, right, will be the challenge. 
our XP value will be the XP and our gold value will be the gold. So all of these values are going to be passed to the sheet automatically once we submit this form. All right, so what did you learn? Um, I learned X, Y, and Z. Um, I'm not going to submit an image here. Well, let's just do it just for laughs. All right, so here's an image. Let's pick anything here. Uh, this blue background sounds good. How about this guy? High five him. Okay, and then feedback. This was so much fun. Submit. Okay. All right, so now that we've submitted this challenge, we should see that that data was written and it's now available in our challenge log. Let's zoom out. Refresh. There it is. Okay. So, uh, only thing that hasn't been marked is whether or not this is approved. All right. Cool. Now, we have to deal with some visibility conditions here. So I've completed this challenge already. I shouldn't be able to complete it more than once. So yes, we're gonna use that same tactic that we used in our onboarding to make this button a grayed out button after completing the challenge. So we're gonna again, duplicate this complete challenge button, come over here to the second one and make it grayed out. And we need to add in that same trick of the dead link. So we're gonna add a column to our challenges sheet. It's going to be a template column and it's going to be a hashtag done. And this complete challenge will be an open link of our dead link. Okay. Now in our onboarding process, we had this complete challenge, this dead button be our default, but actually we want our live button to be the default. And this only happens once they've completed the challenge. So how can we check to make sure that the user has completed the challenge? Well, we need to do a relation between our challenges sheet and the submissions. So back in our data, we're going to look here at our submissions and where can we get some unique values of the user? and the challenge. Well, we have the email address and we have the challenge here, but they're two different columns. So to do a check, we're actually going to merge these two challenge or these two columns together to form one template column that's going to serve as our reference to see whether or not they've uh, attempted and completed this challenge. So we're going to add a new column here to our challenge log and we're going to call this um, challenge uh, dash user ID, you can call it whatever you want again. And it's gonna be a template column where we're gonna match the challenge name and the email address of our user submission. So here's the challenge and the email. Okay, done. And in our challenges, Okay, here we have the, we need to create a relation. Well, we have the title, but how can we get the email address to appear here, right? This is not a user profile sheet. This is a sheet of just challenges. So here's a trick where you can add in the currently signed in user to this sheet. We're gonna add a new column to our challenges sheet. We're going to call this uh, signed in, I usually call mine current, current user email. And this is going to be a template column. Type anything you want, E for email. And I'm going to replace E with, if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, you'll see one here that says user and then email address. And this, anything in user is whoever is signed in at the moment. We're gonna use this feature a lot coming moving forward here in our app. So our current email address. And you see here, because I'm the one signed in over here, that this is the email address that displays. Done. Ooh, our new column, our dead link wasn't named, was it? Dead link. Okay. So we have our currently signed in user and we have a title, so we're going to create a template column that merges the two identically so it, uh, we can do that relation to the challenge. So we're going to grab the 
Um, again, challenge email ID. Okay, so we're going to do a template column. <clears throat> we're going to match the challenge and the email. C for challenge, E for email. So we're going to do the title and the current user email, just like so. And now we can do a relation between the challenge and the submission because they match. Hello world dash Robert and then hello world dash Robert. All right, so we're going to call this rel to submissions. And we're going to do a relation column where we're going to match that challenge email ID to the challenge log challenge user ID. I guess I call them two different things. Oh well. And we'll match. Now we're not going to have multiple, <clears throat> but uh, that's okay. We'll match multiple anyway. My relationship here to the submissions you see is already filled out because I have a match. I've already completed this challenge. If I didn't, this cell, this whole column would be empty, right? So if it's empty, that means I haven't yet completed the challenge, so I should show the complete challenge button. If it's not empty, then I want to hide that button so they can't resubmit, right? So I'm going to go ahead to uh, my complete challenge button. And this should only show when that relationship is empty. So I'm going to go over here to the relationship, to my submissions, is empty. And this button should only show when that relationship is not empty, meaning that I've already completed it. So because I've already completed this, that complete challenge button is done. And we don't want to call it complete challenge because They've already completed it. We'll reverse this and say challenge submitted. Okay. All right. Let's go back a screen, and here we see that this is our under our new challenges button here. But it's no longer a new challenge, is it? It's one that's already been uh, submitted. So we need to have a new status for these challenges, right? So here um, I'm going to call. I'm going to switch this from new challenges to just challenges. Okay, and we need to create an if then column here. Now, before we create that if then column, we actually need to turn off multiple relation on this column because our lookup values won't match right. So, turn off match multiple to our challenge link. All right, um, in our challenge log, okay, we have our approved checkboxes here. And we're going to do a lookup of that value. So we're going to do whether or not this is approved. And we're going to do a lookup. And we're going to get the rel submissions and approved. OK. And so right now we have this empty checkbox because this status has not been approved yet. All right, now we can make our if then column. And we'll call it status. And we're going to set some conditions and then set some statuses based on those conditions. So the first one being, if our submissions is empty, then we have a new challenge. Okay. At the moment, it's not empty because I actually submitted a challenge and so the relationship is valid. Okay. Next, we're going to check to whether or not our challenge has been approved. So if approved is true, then you can say complete or approved. I'll just say complete. Okay. Otherwise, if our rel submissions is not empty, meaning it's something's been submitted, then we'll mark it as pending. And you see that pending is the status that gets assigned to my row because I have submitted an entry that has not yet been uh, approved. All right, so now we have pending. And you can see here that if I come to the challenge log and approve this row, then this becomes approved. And then it satisfies the if then condition to mark this row as complete. All right, so I'm going to mark that as unapproved for now. And so marked as pending. Back in our layout and our challenges, 
Here we can see challenge submitted. We can maybe include a status field at the top here, right? Another action text maybe of our status. And none. All right, so pending, reward. See, now we're starting to get more of these kind of items. Here's where I like to do a basic table instead. It's just a little bit cleaner. So we have our uh, status and what our reward is. And let's place that above the title, like so. That's not bad. Okay, maybe even give us a title like details. Nah. Okay, um, good enough. Good enough for now. All right, so then we're gonna come back here and we see that our challenge, right? And we should also maybe group this by the status. So to do that, we can come to our inline list. Under the features, we can add a group by whether this by the status. So now we have our pending, um, our pending items marked as pending because we're grouping it by the status, and right now it's pending. If I were to just really quickly here go to this challenges and create a second challenge here. I make it identical except for the fact that I'm going to change this to hello world 2 and give it a refresh. Because I have not completed hello world 2, we should have one called new. Neat, right? And maybe we want to adjust the sort order here, right? Um, where all of our new are on top and all of our pending are underneath. Okay, so we'll need to create a sort. And to do that, we'll do another if then column in our challenges. So we can call this challenge sort. That'd be an if then. So if the status is new, then one. If status is pending, then two. Otherwise, three done. Okay, so our new is one, our pending is two, so now we have some numbers to sort by, so our inline list features sort, and we'll sort by challenge sort. Boom. So now all of our new challenges will be on top, all of our pending challenges will be underneath. Not bad. All right, so if I go to pending, right, challenge submitted, I can't do anything with it, right, hello world two, I still can because I haven't yet completed this challenge. It's looking good so far. Um, and then if a challenge is approved, then this should be marked completed. All right, so let's go ahead and simulate that. My challenge log, I'm gonna mark it approved, give us a refresh, and now this should go to a completed, just like that. Which means the status here should now be complete, and it is. Awesome. All right, so we have our challenge sections. And so now we want to award our users the points for only completed challenges. So to do that, we need to have a relation between the challenge log, whether or not it was completed, and the user itself. So we're going to go back to our data, go to the users, and we're going to add a column, right? Oh, first we need to add in uh, our gold column. So we'll call this total gold. I do X, XP total. What do I call my XP one? Total XP. So let's call this one total gold. And just like our XP column, we're going to make it a math column. We're going to do uh, zero to start off with. Or maybe you want to give your users uh, some bonus gold to start off with, maybe like five. Okay. Uh, nothing using a group separator, sure. And our units can be that gold emoji or that money bag emoji again. Where it's gonna display before the number, like that. All right, here's our total gold. Let's go and bring this over to our, next to our XP as well. 
they're kind of next to each other like that. So we have our column set up for our gold. Now we need to do a relation to where our email matches the email of our challenges. So we can award points, but we only want to award them if it was approved, true. So we need to create a new link in both of these sheets. So in our challenge log, okay, we're gonna create a new column here. It's gonna be a template column. And this is gonna be our email address and then the status. Okay, so E for email, S for status. So email uh, status. Okay, so E for email, S for status. All right, so anything that was approved, we're gonna have our name plus true. If it wasn't approved, it'd be our email dash false. Okay. And then in our users, we need to match only when we have email true. So before we create a relation, we need to create that template here as well. So we're gonna call this um, email dash true. And we might use this more than once in our app. So um, it's good to label it what you hope to use it for. So email dash true template where E stands for email and we're just going to use the value true. So E for email address. All right, so now we have a link. Oops. <laughs> okay, so the E and true and the E here doesn't work. So let's do a capital E for email. There we go. Okay, so now we can do relate for email true matching our challenges. So I'm gonna add a column here and I'm gonna do a relation rel to challenge approved. Oops, maybe a rel to approved challenges. Okay. It's gonna be a relationship to where our email true matches the value in challenge log and then our email status. All right, we have a match. So because we have a match, um, uh, it, this is filled in as you see here, and we want to match multiple because there's gonna be multiple times where we submit uh, challenges where our email address and true will be, uh, will have a match. So we're gonna match multiple for this. All right, and now we're gonna uh, start gathering up our our total gold earned and XP earned for our challenges. So we're gonna add two columns. These are gonna be roll-up columns. Okay, a roll-up column will let you total or average or find the minimum or find the maximum of a set of data that you, from a relation or from a sheet. So we're gonna call this um, XP from challenges. And we're gonna summarize the values of our approved challenges, the XP that was awarded by calculating the sum. All right, so right now I've earned 25 XP for completing that one challenge. Done. We're gonna do the same thing for gold. So we're gonna call this uh, gold from challenges. I'm gonna roll up summarizing the values of our approved challenges, but now we're grabbing our gold value by calculating the sum. Good. All right, now you see we, these don't have labels to them. So we're gonna come over here to our challenge log and make sure they have labels. All right, so this should have the label of XP and this should have the label of gold. Is it still on my clipboard? It is, nice. No precision. Okay, so now if I come back here, those should have the values now. They do, perfect. Okay, and so this was our math column for our XP. This is our math column for our total gold. I like to kind of keep things close by each other. So let's drag this over. And I'm gonna drag this gold over. There we go. And now we can add this column to our math column and this column to this math column. So right now we have zero and we're gonna add our XP from challenges. So we'll do 
Um, we'll just do a capital C for challenges. XP from challenges. Done. So now we have 25 as our total. And same thing for our total gold, right? We started it off with five. We're giving them five bonus gold, right? We're going to add, again, capital C for gold from challenges, like so. So now we have a total of 10 gold for this user. Spectacular. And that should only accrue when a challenge is approved, right? So to verify that, we're going to complete our second challenge here. Complete the challenge. I learned A, B, and C. Uh, I'm going to add another image here just for fun. And this one was awesome. Submit. All right, we see now our status is pending. The challenge has been submitted, so I can't resubmit. This uh, has now been marked as pending challenges, and this is our complete challenges. Okay, and I should not have been awarded this 25 and five gold here because it was not yet approved and did not, so it didn't satisfy the true part of the template link that we created. And so I should still have 25 and 10 as our gold, which I do, 25 and 10. However, if I mark this approved, this should jump to 50 and 15. So my challenge log, I'm going to approve this challenge. Okay, which means this is now, both these are complete. And we might want to do something with this in a second. I'll talk about that. Um, and back in our users, we should now see 50 and 15. 50 and 15. So our math columns are working. Uh, we have some XP here. We have some gold here. And these are happening automatically based on the admin checking that box. Pretty neat, right? Okay, so um, the last step here is what if our admin wants to use the, uh, use the app to approve challenges and not simply the spreadsheet? Well, we need to create a space for that, don't we? So back over here in our uh, tab view, we are going to create an admin section. So here under label, we're going to create admin. And our source is going to be just users, I guess. And let's come up with a nice, like maybe a shield logo for our admin section. Like that it looks nice. Okay. And here I see our admin tab. We're going to hide this admin tab in the menu, like so. All right, and in this admin tab, we are going to place a variety of things, but the first thing we're going to add is just the ability to approve challenges. So we're going to make this a details view and get rid of all of this superfluous information. Okay, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add an inline list of, maybe, um, do I do an inline list? No, let's go ahead and add a list relation. So a list relation will sum up an inline list in one row here. An inline list of all challenges that have not yet been completed. So just to verify that, let's uncheck these boxes here. I'm going to delete these rows in between since they don't do anything for us. Okay, and these values are gonna be the challenge log. And so this should only have two items right now, correct. And we only wanna show ones that haven't been approved. So our features is we're gonna filter where approved is not true. Okay, and we're going to call this unapproved challenges. So we have two items here. If there's only one item, that's when this thing will show. So maybe the title should be the email address of the user and the details could be the challenge or maybe just the, uh, yeah, the email and the challenge maybe. So again, what should that look like? So we have here the email address of the user 
We have the challenge, maybe the timestamp when it was completed, like so. And the image could be the image of the actual challenge. Um, it could be uh, their evidence, right, if it was submitted. If there's image not available, we're not going to show anything. And I don't love the way this looks. I think that maybe this should be the username and this should be have a nice timestamp. So in the challenge log, we're going to change our timestamp formatting. We're going to drag this over here anyway. Let's drag timestamp all the way over. And we're going to change and edit our timestamp column to be a little bit prettier. Um, do we want seconds or the time? Sure, yeah, we want the time. Uh, July 25th, fine. If you want to even do longer, so it has the day as well. So it looks like this now, Saturday, July 25th at 10.07 p.m. Perfect. Okay, and I want the name of the user, not the email address. So the only way to do that would be to do a relation. So here's our challenge log, and we're going to relate our email, uh, relate to the uh, user. So we're going to relate the email address of the person submitting this form back to the users and match the email address. We don't need to match multiple because it'll only bring up one user. And now we're going to get the username. And so we're going to do a lookup of that relation and grab the username. Uh, we can also grab the avatar. Why not too? So let's call, let's do the avatar lookup relation avatar. Okay, so then maybe instead of the evidence here, we're grabbing that avatar instead. Oops, avatar. So we get a picture of the person submitting, right? And then instead of the email, we can grab their username, like that. I like that. That looks cleaner. All right, so then same thing here. Instead of their email address, we'll grab their username and the image will be their avatar. All right, so unapproved challenges. So here's their challenge. And then what, as the admin, do we need to see? Well, we should be able to see um, in a title what the challenge was, maybe what the timestamp was, that they completed it. Uh, the image could be, I guess it could be their avatar. Or maybe this is taking up too much space and just leave it as nothing. Bye, Bob. Okay, uh, we could do, oh, we can, we could do, we could do a relation where it's gonna match the user. So here's the user, here's the person, here's their guild, cool. All right, and this will link out to their public profile in case we want that as the admin. And then we need their evidence and their feedback. So we can do a rich text or maybe their, just, we'll just do action text for now. We're gonna grab their comment we're going to grab um, their feedback let's see it would be a nice way to display the feedback maybe in a basic table so feedback like that um, and then we need to mark it, uh, we need their evidence, their picture, right? So if it was an image, this will be their evidence of their image. Make it a one-to-one -one ratio. Okay. And then we need to mark it approved or not. So for that, I like to use the switch component and we'll say approve challenge. All right. Um, maybe under the basic table. I mean, we already know that it's pending, but maybe we can include the status here as well. Oh no, the status is in the other one, so never mind. Okay, so this approved challenge, we can throw it to the top, just so it's nice and readily available for the admin. 
And so here they can come in and approving this challenge does the exact same thing as checking this box here in the spreadsheet. So they can approve the challenge, which then awards the user the points. And because these are only unapproved challenges, it gets hidden from the, the view here. Now, if we wanna show all approved challenges, then we can just duplicate this list and switch it so where the features is approved is true, like so. And then mark this as approved challenges. So unapproved and approved, awesome. And so if I approve this challenge, okay, now I see approved challenges to items. So now we have a nice little admin section for our admin users as well. Now, we don't want everybody to be able to see this tab, so we need to set some tab visibility only when the admin or the user is an admin, right? So we need to edit that last bit of information into our users tab here. We need to create a column called role, or we can call them like, you know, is admin. And this can be an insert a checkbox. Again, we're gonna delete all blank rows. It's a good habit to get into in building apps with Glide because when they sign into the app, it'll automatically add rows anyway. And so let's simulate the fact that this person is an admin. Okay. And this admin tab should only show up when um, the user is an admin. So in the tabs section here, I'm going to go to admin tab, features, and set the visibility to where is admin is true. All right, so because I am an admin, I will see the admin tab and can thus um, award users points. Okay, um, if I'm not an admin, let's add in a new row here and we'll call this Jim at email.com. All right, give us a refresh. And so let's set up a profile for Jim, Jim Lyons. And I have a nice picture for Jim here. Jimmy Fallon, complete the profile. All right, so there's Jimmy, he's part of the Lions. He's got no points yet, nothing, right? He's got five gold though for starting bonus, right? But you'll see that because he is not an admin, he does not have access to the admin tab. Okay, so only I can award Jim points. And just so you see what that looks like, I go to challenges, here's my first, right? I can complete the challenge, blah, blah, blah. Uh, here's an image of myself and give some feedback, submit. It's marked as pending, right? Uh, as the admin, I can go to the admin tab. I can see that Jim has an unapproved challenge. I can look at it and I can approve the challenge. So now it's under my approved challenges. And if I preview it back as Jim again, right? He does not have access to the admin tab, but I should see that um, he's now got some XP that he earned from, uh, from, from completing the challenge. And now this is marked as complete for Jim. Pretty neat. Now I guess the last thing here that we haven't done yet as part of this long video, my apologies, is we don't have a space here for the gold that this person has earned. Um, so let's go ahead and create that um, as part of the user profile. And what we can do is at the top here, we can add in a basic table. And on the right hand side, we're going to include the total gold. And on the left hand side, we're going to include the total XP. So kind of looks like a status bar, right? And we're going to throw this basic table at the very top. And now we have a header at the top of our profile that has their total XP and their total gold. And if I sign in as me, I should see the same thing. So my total XP 
and my total gold. Both of us are novices, right? So if I go to the um, ranks and go to novice, both of us should be there with our XP that we've earned so far. And here's Jim's public profile. And here's my public profile. All right. So video three down. Uh, admins can now approve challenges submitted by users which automatically award XP and gold to their public profiles. All right, stay tuned for video four of how to gamify Glide. Coming at you soon. Thanks for watching.